This is a full review of the Pioneer DDJ SB3 beginner DJ controller, which is a follow-up to the SB2, a Serato DJ Lite controller. It comes with that software, so it's got everything in the box for a couple of hundred to get you going. It's not a pro controller. This is what a pro controller looks like. It's a lot heavier, it's a lot bigger, it's got a lot more features. However, this has got a lot of trickle-down features from the pro controllers on it. The layout, the asymmetrical layout of the decks, the controls on it, even two or three years ago, you would never get controls like I'm about to show you on a beginner controller for this kind of price. And of course, it's got the Jazzy Jeff mode on it as well. I interviewed Jazzy Jeff about this highly controversial mode that allows you to auto scratch. In reality, it's pretty awesome as you're about to see in this review. So we're gonna have a look around the controller now. I'll talk you through the features and demo what's going on with this. Nice responsive jog wheels, aluminium, the same size as on the SB2. Very easy to use with the scratch mode that you just saw when the vinyl button is switched on or a nudge mode for the whole jog wheel that slows down and speeds the track up when the vinyl button is switched off. The edge is always nudge. This is pretty standard stuff. Holding down shift allows you to search through the track using the jog wheel. There are eight proper, although slightly smaller than pro DJs will be used to, real pads down here, although they're limited in their use by some of the limitations of the Serato DJ Lite software. For instance, there are only four hot cue buttons here, and they're all the same color, unlike in the software where they're a different color. It would have been nice to see these hot cues in a different color. We're gonna look a lot more closely at what goes on with these buttons in a minute, but first let's just have a little tour of the controller. So the play and pause button and the cue button are now hard plastic, and again, a kind of shrunken version of the Pro DJ controller buttons, much better than the, than the rubber buttons on the older version of this on the SB2. There are filters on every channel. Cut all the way low and high. A three band EQ and a trim on every channel. This is pro stuff. The trim is useful because it allows you to balance your inputs before you do anything else with them. Three band EQ is better than two band, which has been what's featured on a lot of budget controllers up until recently. So again, you're getting a lot of features on here, which you usually find on more expensive controllers. Here is our pitch or tempo fader. You can turn the pitch lock on and off by pressing shift, uh, by pressing key lock. There we go, so now there's no key lock. Pressing shift and pressing this button actually alters the tempo range so that this tempo slider affects a lot wider percentages. Which clearly sounds a bit crazy, but it's, uh, it's very useful if you're gonna mess around uh, trying to add something creative to your DJing there. Although it's a short throw fader, it actually it is quite accurate as you can see on the screen now. I'm adjusting by very small increments here up and down. Uh, by about 0.02%. So uh, you need to be a little bit careful with that, but it does do the job of allowing you to manually beat match if you want to do that on this controller. Of course, most people are gonna use the sync buttons. Sync buttons are hidden here. Of course, the sync button is not the biggest enemy of DJing on this controller because it has the Jazzy Jeff button. That's here, but I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit more about that in a second. Round here at the front of the controller is simply a headphone socket, nothing else on the front of the controller, and it's designed for the eighth inch headphone jack, mini jack style. If your headphones come with one of these that doesn't come off, then it's not gonna be able to plug into there. So bear that in mind when choosing headphones or when choosing this controller, if you already own a pair of headphones you like that only has one of these on it. Around the back of the unit, there's a USB in out, and this powers the controller as well. There's no need for external power at all, which is pretty useful. There is a RCA out left and right here. The only outputs are RCA unbalanced, and there is a TS quarter inch microphone jack input here with a microphone level. This goes nowhere near the mixer built into the controller. It just goes straight to the outputs. You plug your microphone in here and you use this little level meter to get a clean, loud enough microphone signal coming out the other side. Pretty limited ins and outs, but just what you'd expect on a controller of this budget range. No XLR balanced input and of course no balanced or booth outputs here. The browse encoder here lets you cycle through the tracks in your current folder and also cycle through your folders on the left hand side of the screen as well. And hitting the load button will load the currently selected track onto the deck, either left or right. To switch between decks one and three on the left and two and four on the right, you simply press these buttons here. So although it is possible to DJ with this unit with all four decks because it only has two channel faders, it's a little bit fiddly and I believe most people won't bother to do that. They'll be, mo they'll be completely happy with two decks, especially with some of the other features we're about to look at as well. 
Moving down then, our master volume output is here. We also have our headphones level here. So when our headphones are plugged in to that little eight inch mini jack socket here, we can hear it on our headphones. The meters down here are showing us what's happening as the track enters the channel. So in other words, altering the trim will alter the output level on that meter. They're not related to the master volume at all. I can turn this up and down as loud or quiet as I want, and these are gonna stay the same, which is probably the best way to do it if you've only got two little meters on a small controller like this. It's more useful to be able to balance your tracks to each other than worrying about the master output level. Although it would be nice to have some kind of master output metering rather than having to look at Serato, which brings its own complications into the way this stuff works. Uh, a little red light there, for instance, to just show that you were peaking might be nice. So the queuing, master one and two, decides what goes through your headphones. I'm listening to track one now, track two now, and what is going out of the master output now. That's a useful button to have because it means if you ha don't have a booth monitor, uh, and so your speakers are a long way away from you, it's quite hard to monitor what the crowd is hearing. This will al allow you to do that in your headphones. However, there isn't a master Q knob, which is uh, more usual uh, than just having a button for on off uh, for that function. So let's move on to looking at the effects units at the top here and here. This effect unit is for this deck and also for deck three when you've got that button pressed. This effect unit is for this deck and deck four when you have that button pressed. There is no way of reassigning those effects units, but that's okay. So let's have a play with the effects. On the screen, you have to press the effects button at the top, which brings the effects panel into view. There's no way of doing that from the controller. Once you've done that, holding down shift and pressing one, two, or three allows you to select an effect for each of those slots. There are three effects per side there. So pressing shift there and keeping pressing the button, I'm going through flanger, echo, reverb, phaser, high pass filter, and low pass filter. They are pretty obvious effects, but that said, they are the ones you're most likely to want to use. So all good there. To turn an effect on, you press its button. That effect is now switched on, it's the phaser. To turn it off, press the button again. You've got the low pass filter here, turn it off, and the flanger here. You can alter the intensity of the effect by pressing the level. This affects all three of them. So if I want to alter the intensity of the phaser, it's also going to alter the intensity of the other two, although they're not turned on at the moment, so we're not gonna hear them. That's just the low pass filter, and that's just the flanger. Now, on the screen it says beats 1 16th. That is the LFO, or how quickly the effect cycles. In order to make the effect cycle uh, over uh, a larger length of time, you can hold down the shift button and press beat here. It's now an eighth of a beat. It's now half a beat, one beat. That effect is now cycling every one beat. And on Serato DJ Lite, you can get up to eight beats there. That's taking eight beats to cycle through that whole effect. And again, I can bring the other effects back in if I want, but they are locked together, which is one of the limitations I was talking about. And if you want to alter the length of time it takes for this stuff to happen down a little bit, then you just press shift and the beat button again. We're now back down to a one beat effect there. One of the areas where controllers like this have improved a lot in recent years is the implementation of the pads. While shrunken down, these pads offer a lot of the functions of bigger controllers. So let's dive in and have a look at the pads now when we're also gonna look at that dreaded jazzy Jeff mode. So, okay, the pads have hot cue, effects fade, Jazzy Jeff or Pad Scratch and Sampler down here. There are three other functions which are available only on Serato DJ Pro, the upgraded software. By holding Shift, you get Beat Jump, Roll and Slicer. Useful but advanced functions. And there is another one by holding Shift and pressing Sampler called Transform, which I'm going to show you, which is available on this controller in Serato DJ Lite. So again, let's start a track playing. You'll notice that I used the hot cue to start that track playing. That's a hot cue right at the beginning of the track there. And you can have hot cues set wherever you want, which is useful for remixing a track live, jumping around in the track. The hot cues can be deleted by pressing shift and pressing the hot cue in order to do that. Now, the four buttons at the bottom in this mode aren't hot cues. They actually take you back to the beginning of the track. They fast forward through the track and they rewind through the track, which is a similar function to holding down shift and going like this. And also there's a sensor button, which is to cut out ostensibly swearing and so on. It's also quite a useful little function. So right, it plays the track backwards for a second as you're holding it. And as soon as you take your finger off it, it carries on playing where it would have been had you not touched the button like this. So 
So something you can have fun with there as well as cleaning up tracks when you're playing to audiences that don't want to hear the cussing in them. So the next function is effects fade. This was also something that we liked about Algorithm's DJ Pro software. And it's nice to see it on another controller here as well. This is a one button way of progressively introducing an effect uh, and also fading the track out. So let's show you what it sounds like and then I'll show you a, a way of using it. So in this track, let's jump away from that uh, very quiet break in order to show it to you when it drops now. And I had to move the crossfade across there because this would have started playing again when it had finished that spin back function. We heard that a second ago like this. Just keeps doing it over and over again. So these, think about these as, uh, think of these as a way of making your transitions more interesting without really having to do an awful lot. Uh, of course, you could do it the, the old fashioned way. You could just do it by. Doing that. And that's absolutely fine. As you're about to see with the pad scratch function, again, it's just giving you an easy way to do something. Maybe when you're learning about what this stuff does, learning about how it works. Uh, and you don't really know what to do until you're shown just on a button and then you can try and advance a little bit further once you understand it. So onto the pad scratch, onto the Jazzy Jeff button. Firstly, let me show you how it works. I've loaded up a, a very, very, very famous scratch sound here. I'm sure you know that one. There's a few on here actually. And this one. So these scratch sounds are very typically what you hear scratch DJs messing around with. Uh, you can get these in the free scratch starter pack from Digital DJ Tips as part of our Scratching for Controller DJs course. There's some info about that underneath. But for now, let me show you how Jazzy Jeff's uh, button implements scratching on this system. So the first thing you have to do is set a hot cue at the sound you want to scratch. So I'm gonna set a hot cue here at the beginning of this sound. There it is, there's my hot cue. Now, once you've set that hot cue, you can switch on pad scratch mode, and then each of these buttons will jump back to the hot cue and apply a Jazzy Jeff scratch, for instance. And that's actually the sound that I've set the hot cue to that's being scratched. And what that's doing is automatically cutting the crossfader in and out where appropriate and applying the Jazzy Jeff scratch. Of course, you could do it yourself if you wanted. That's the point. The point is it's here for you to see what it sounds like and then move on to trying to practice this stuff. So at the moment, the deck isn't playing. So they're just scratching like that. But the deck could be playing. So if I hit play, You can see that you can start to build up your own perfect scratch patterns to suit your DJing, and then when you take your finger off the button, it'll carry on playing. And again, of course, if you've got another track playing on the other deck, as long as they're synced up, then it will scratch in time with the track that you've got lined up. So there's my sound ready there. By pressing the Jazzy Jeff buttons, or the pad scratch buttons, the scratching's actually gonna be in time, so. Really useful, really fun, not gonna ruin DJing, not gonna turn you into Jazzy Jeff, not gonna change the world as we know it, but a great little function. So I'm glad we put that one to bed. Uh, so the other function on here on the top buttons is the sampler. Now the sampler lets you put what are called samples into slots in the software and then trigger them using these buttons here. Again on the sampler, you only have four slots. So again on the sampler, the bottom four buttons do the same thing that I showed you on the hot cue. Back to the beginning, rewind, fast forward and sensor. Let's load a sample up and I have a classic air horn sample here. You need to press the sample button on the software in order to show the sample slots and then you drag a sample into the sample slot. All this has to be done on the computer. When that's there, it appears on the button and you can trigger it wherever, whenever you want just by going to sample and pressing that button. There's no syncing going on here. There's none of this sense of you hit sync and it'll, it'll line up your sample uh, with 
what's going on on the other deck. It simply triggers the sample. But that said, for DJI dents, for jingles, for little bits that you want to just drop in over your, over your tracks, you've got four slots on each deck there, which are really nice. So the transform function is also known as a gate and you can hold down shift and press the sample button it will start flashing and that means you're in transform mode. To demo this for you I've got that ah yeah sound here. Oh, yeah. And what I'm going to do is use the auto loop function which is something else I haven't shown you. That's down here. You just hit this button here to turn on auto loop and you press half and two times to half or double the length of the loop. It goes up to eight beats and down to uh, half a beat. So I'm gonna loop that uh, at two beats. Ah, uh, yeah, ah, uh, yeah, ah, uh, yeah. There's my two beats, looping that uh, classic scratch sound. Now I'm gonna drop in this techno track here over the top of it. That'll do for now. So trans chops whatever you're applying it to in and out of the mix very quickly. But when you hold the button down, it does it. When you take your hand off, it stops like this. see that the frequency is getting slower as we move up. The next one's interesting because it's not a half or double. It's in thirds of a beat. That's quite a musical one. I quite like that one. And the final one is manual. It turns the beat off when you press it. mess around with it like that. With any gate control, it's important to press it bang on the beat or it sounds a bit off. Now finally, just to finish showing you looping, there is manual looping on here as well, which is nice to have. I'll start this track playing and to set a manual loop, you hold down shift and press the half times button and that activates the word in underneath. All the shift functions are written underneath the various places where you can turn them on so you can see what you're gonna get when you press shift. So I'm gonna hold down shift and press in like this. On the screen, you can see the loops happening. When I press the other button, the out button, it loops it for me. The point with having a manual loop is it allows you to do a, a loop on a track that maybe uh, the auto loop doesn't get it quite right because the track might be played by a, a funky drummer or a rock band or something that isn't electronic and auto loop functions tend to not work too well with electronic music. Finally, something that's awesome on here about the effects, they are post fader. What does that mean? It means that when you've got music playing, and you turn an effect on, for instance, an echo that's got a tail. In other words, an echo needs time to work, right? Echoes are, by definition, something that happens after the original sound. It's not going to disappear when you turn that channel off. Let me show you. Let's turn an echo on on this track. Turn the channel off. And you can hear the echo has had time to fade out. That wasn't always the case with beginner controllers, and it's good to see post-fader effects on the DDJ SB3. You know, it's curious. I think Pioneer would rather not have made this controller. They have their own software, Rekordbox DJ. But the Pioneer DDJ SB and then the SB2 after it were the best selling controllers in their respective years. So this is a bit of a no brainer for them to follow up uh, and sell loads and loads of them. And quite rightfully, yes, it might be shrunk down. Yes, the software that comes with it might not do everything that Serato DJ Pro, the $99 upgrade does. But actually, this is better suited to the Serato DJ Lite software. The extra features on here for Serato DJ Pro are fiddly to get to, the extra effects are fiddly to get to, and it's been optimized so that the stuff that's right front and center when you're DJing with this as a beginner is all accessible in Serato DJ Lite down here without pressing awkward shift functions and so on, and it's the kind of functions you're going to enjoy, like the Jazzy Jeff Auto Scratch function, like the Fader Effects function. So while you might want to upgrade to the Serato DJ Pro software, at that point you might also want to upgrade your DJ controller 
to take make better use of the extra features of that software. Not least the fact that this has got four decks, but you can't really get to the other two uh, without really learning to concentrate. Otherwise, things are going to go horribly wrong in the mix. It's best suited to DJ with just the two decks and the two faders on the mixer to control them. So the Pioneer DDJ SB3, if you've enjoyed this review, please like, follow, do all that good stuff so we can carry on making stuff like this for you. And if you haven't seen my interview with Jazzy Jeff talking about the auto scratch function, do go and watch it. It's really revealing. There's a link underneath this. And I'll see you in my next review very soon.